What's going on guys? Vic VP back one of the game case arcades video. I'm in the battle station. We got a wrestle fest going on. I got all the machines on wrestling games everywhere because of this. We're looking at the RK one up final fight converted to a wrestle fest. Oh yeah. That was horrible. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk about this RK One Up Wrestle Fest. It's a little bit of a change of scenery. I'm in my basement, my battle station where I get work done, and my arcade area. I call it the battle station. I want to call it my arcade. It's so cliche. But we're down here for two reasons. Number one, I'm cutting cabinets upstairs, so there's dust everywhere, and I didn't want this to get dusty. And number two, we're gonna kind of be able to see physically an arcade One Up three quarter scale machine versus a full scale, full size machine. So stay tuned. We got a lot to talk about with this RK One Up mod, WrestleFest. So if you haven't done it, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Vic underscore VP. If you did, you would have seen the whole process with this and all the cabinets. I will forever say it in my video. So that this, this whole 30 seconds to a minute, it will always happen in all my videos because there are some new subscribers and people who haven't seen the past videos so i will forever be doing this plug so again be sure to follow me on instagram at vic underscore vp again you would have seen the whole process with this i even went and picked it up at the customer's house put it in the truck i did a selfie and all that we're gonna be talking about the cabinet itself we'll talk about the mods everything as far as the rk one up and then towards the end of the video i'm going to talk about my machines here that i have and what's going on on each screen and we'll kind of compare it as far as size. Even you there, you could kind of see the size of this machine versus all the other machines. Um, I did post it on you know Facebook groups and all that, and I made that little kind of joke where it looks like um, it looks like one of those uh, what's the word that that meme where it's like five big dudes versus like one tiny chick. Uh, that's what this looks like. <laughs> but again, we're gonna go full in depth. Let's talk about basics. What is in this mod? All right, so let's start with the basics. Let's talk about what mods are in this and we'll talk about the vendors uh, that are incorporated in this. This isn't sponsored at all. I didn't reach out to these vendors. Customer bought all the pieces on his side and basically just said, hey, Vic, I need you to mod it. So I didn't, I didn't purchase anything really besides just the buttons and the joysticks. Uh, again, customer supplied everything. You are looking at an arcade one-up final fight. Original form was a final fight with a riser converted to a WWF Wrestle Fest. Vinyl decals from Justin, Gulf Coast decals. That's my guy that prints all my artwork here. And I was very excited to hear that the customer bought the vinyl from Gulf Coast decals. The control panel came from 99 Lives and the marquee came from the Arcade Factory or the Arcade Game Factory. Let me get that correct. Yeah, the Arcade Game Factory. Um, in this mod, we are looking at a Pandora's Box 18S Pro running 8,000 games, LED buttons, chrome trim with Sanwa sticks. 99 Live supplied the speakers. They did the control panel and included the speakers on it. With that though, I had to add a kind of hidden feature, which up above the rear, I do have a volume switch. I'll take you closer and you'll see it. So this does have a hidden volume knob. Very convenient, very awesome. And then aside from like, you know, the LED strips and the uh, power supply, the power strip. Now, yes, granted, you don't see many like RK one up mods or videos on my channel. I've done it in the past. Um, you know, I, I will still do it. You could, you know, contact me and message me and I'll still do it. As you can see, um, it usually though turns to like people seeing the videos of the full size cabinets and they're like, you know what, I'll keep this or I'll modify it with the Pandora's box. And then I'm also going to hit you up for another machine. So, Again, I, I have my personal kind of opinions on these RK one ups. I do give customers big heads ups. Usually like the biggest kind of concern and message that I get is probably after a couple of months, the screens die or you get like lines on the screen. That's just what it is. Unless you do like the Dell monitor mod, the 20 inch mod or whatever, uh, that's just to be expected. That has nothing to do with the mod itself. That's just RK one ups quality control. Now, although I'm not a fan of RK one up, I mean, granted, I have my personal opinions about it. I've been doing RK cabinets before RK one up was a thing. And I've said in my past videos that I do give a shout out 
and a kudos to Arcade One Up because they kind of bought back arcades into personal homes. So, you know, I was doing my arcade builds and then Arcade One Up came out and then people are searching videos for like, hey, how do I build an arcade cabinet? And I've been lucky enough that most of the viewers have search that and my name pops up and boom here we are today not to mention shout out to b kong um you know i feel like he has a very big rk one of following and i've been on his earlier streams when he first started um so i'm very happy and blessed with that again i have my personal opinions with the rk one up i have nothing against it um the the big thing that i get when it comes to rk one ups is that people want something cheap and that's a-okay that is what this is it is cheap it does the job but if you are trying to like compare it to like a full size machine, it falls short, very short. Um, I'm gonna talk about the customer, his first initial request, and then you know I'll just tell you the whole story about it. Um, originally, this customer wanted to actually convert this to a four player WrestleFest, and I messaged him. I said, hey, you know, take a look at my Bivik because the four player in that is enough room. Like, there's a lot of elbow room. You're talking about close to a 50 inch deck, 50 inch wide. Um, I purposely do that wide because that's my personal preference. I've seen so many customers and people buying the cabinets and they want space. Uh, and I gave him a heads up, I said, dude, I'll be honest, four players, if you've seen the Simpsons cabinet, if you've seen NBA Jam, I haven't seen NFL Blitz, um, but either way, I've yet to see four grown men. I'm not, I'm not going against the women, but I'm talking about full grown men on an arcade one up, I've yet to see an enjoyable picture of that. Um, like I said in the past, if you remember, I did the Michael Jordan cabinet and the Rambo cabinet. Um, that customer, Al, he actually had an NBA jam in his house, the arcade one up. I've never seen it. And I walked up to him, I was like, oh man. I was like, do you enjoy this? And he's like, Vic, honestly, bro, the four players, it's this game, this system is only good for two players, especially with that four player deck. I haven't seen the Simpsons or the TMNT one, but. Again, it is what it is. So it's pretty cool, like this customer, when I picked up the cabinet, he, he said something that really stuck to me, and I was like, you know what, you're right. He's like, Vic, this is just an adult toy. It's a toy. Um, you know, I, I play with it, you know, one or two hours out of the week, it's a toy. I would invest in a bigger machine if I'm serious into it and I'm gonna play it every day for hours and hours and hours. Um, that was a big thing, he, he named it a toy, and he said, you know what, for the price that I'm paying and all the mods, I have my own WrestleFest, um, you know, I, it's only me that's gonna be playing it because I'll bring it to the basement. The wife has no interest in this. It, it's what he said was true. It is a toy. And with that though, with these toys, you get what you pay for. Um, you know, it comes with cheap buttons. It comes with cheap joysticks. The screen, like I said, that's the biggest complaint. That's honestly why I kind of stay away from modding these things. I'll mod this and I've already, already told customers, I say, listen, the number one thing is the screens go. Vic, what do I do? You have to contact RK one up, you have to buy a new screen, or you gotta do the 20 inch Dell mod. And even with that, you have to modify the cabinet, you gotta make a bracket. Uh, you know, it's at that point, you might as well have spent the money on a full size cabinet. Um, you know, like I said, it's a toy. The, I always laugh when people go like, oh, the buttons suck, and they're like, yes. You know, I was getting Street Fighter cabinets for 150 bucks uh, off the truck you know, in the earlier videos. And you know, even now, like these cabinets are like $299, $399, I don't know the price of them. Um, I do laugh though, and I do feel bad when people are spending, you know, close to seven, $800 on NFL Blitz and the Simpsons cabinet for 600 bucks for two games. Laughing, not in a bad way, it's just like, you know, it just goes to show you that people will pay just to have it. You know, they want this cabinet and they will pay for it. That is what RK went up is getting to you. And people know that you have to modify the buttons and the joystick. So, granted, yes, I have my personal opinions on RK One Up. You could still modify an RK One Up. That is great. You can still contact me, and as you can see, I will do it. Enough with the RK One Up rant. Let's talk about more details and my experience with these whole vendors on this. So, I want to do the vendors right now because uh, I'll be honest. The, the, there's three vendors. Like I said, you got Justin Gulf Coast Decals. We got 99 Lives and we have the Arcade Game Factory. I'm gonna start with number one with the most shocking and the most beautiful thing is the marquee. I'll be brutally honest, it is gorgeous. I Yes, I've, I've had Angel this ability. He's an awesome dude. I've had his marquees. I've never experienced or seen the game, Arcade Game Factory. And I'll be honest, it is a beautiful marquee. Uh, it's great. There's no wash. It came with the LED. It was a very good swap. I basically had to take out 
the Final Fight board. It's not even a marquee, it's just a board for Final Fight, the Gen 1s. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a good swap. And again, the best part of this cabinet, honestly, is the marquee. It is constructed well. I'm very pleased with it. I don't know what the customer spent on it, but whatever it was, it is, it is clean. So big kudos and shout out to the Arcade Game Factory for the marquee because when I like put the light on, even with the light off, I was like, wow, this is a, this is a nice marquee. So again, I've witnessed angels and I've personally seen angels. They are very close as far as quality. I've never seen Arcade Game Factory. Now I see it and I would recommend that it. it's a great looking marquee. Next, we're gonna to touch upon 99 Lives. The control panel was a couple of things. And again, this is the only time I've ever experienced it. I'm not bad mouthing 99 Lives. It's just something that I did notice. Um, number one, the customer told me that 99 Lives took a good month to send this deck out. That's fine. You know, quality control is quality control. I'm not gonna complain about the timing. The customer was upset. He's like, why did it take a month? That, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Um, the only kind of thing I have to note is I'm not sure, maybe they just have to adjust their like CNC file. Um, it's mainly towards player one and it's the joysticks. Uh, I don't know what joysticks they recommend you use. I have Sanwa's on these and player one, the control, if you know Sanwa's, they have, it's, it's, a, it's the joystick with the four or five pins. Uh, that go into the side. It's like a connector piece. It's not like an industry Lorenzo where it has four micro switches. This one has like the special connector. If I lifted this deck, the connector is right against the sidewall. I mean, right again, you have like a millimeter of space. And not to mention, I did try to turn the joystick. So Vic, it's in the way of the side, turn the joystick. I did that. The connector is now right up against the button here and it wouldn't connect, you can't connect it. So it must be, player one must be towards the left here. It's gotta be on the left side. Industry Lorenzo joysticks, even HAP, the, that base is big. It's bigger than the Sanwa. So I don't know if it's advertised that you need Sanwa's, but even with the Sanwa, you just, it just made it. Um, what am I getting at? Basically, they might have to kind of adjust their CNC if they push this over, no joke, like a quarter of an inch, you'd be good. Player two is okay, you know, because the button's on the right side, there's nothing wrong with the joysticks, but player one, when I put this control panel in, I have to actually put it in at an angle, down here and then down, because of that connector. It, 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 you have to do it that way, there's no way around it. Um, so that's my only suggestion to 99 Lives, is move player one over. You could leave player two, but again, going back to what I said, I don't know if they recommend the joystick, a hundred thousand percent if you put the half or an industry lorenzo um joystick which is a very thick square base that ain't gonna fit that's not gonna fit you can even see how close it is it's not gonna fit so you definitely need sandwas for this specific panel you need sandwas and again if they just moved over a little bit that's my only kind of suggestion now, 99 Lives also supplied the speakers. I did tell the customer, I said, don't get the add-on because I don't know how much the add-on was. Um, and I'm not gonna look at the price. I suggested don't get the speakers because I usually like to put the Z313 uh, Logitech in this with a subwoofer, so it, it's loud. Um, but he said, Vic, 99 Lives gives you the speaker. It's basically just two speakers and red and black wires. So you have to connect it to an amp. You need an amplifier for this kind of mod, which I'll talk about the mod the amplifier mod next later on um but the speakers are big they are like they're, they're they are big uh good quality speaker it's just me personally i don't know what you paid for it i get my z throw and threes on ebay refurbished open box and they're like 30 bucks so i don't know how much the speaker mod costed but 30 bucks gets you a subwoofer and stereo left and right speaker so just keep that in mind again 90 lives is great um, plexiglass on it. it, it's it's good stuff. Again, I'm definitely sure they're using a CNC, um, but again, my only complaint is that joystick. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll open it up for you real quick so you can see it. All right, so now I'm gonna take off the control panel. I took the screws off. I just kinda wanna see if you can actually see it. Yeah, you know what, I'm gonna bring you in closer. Hold on, I'm gonna hold you in my hands. I could even do it from the back, but just to show you real quick. Look at that. That right there is my complaint. 
that is right against it. I'm telling you, that is, you can see it. There it is. So I'm gonna take the control panel off just to show you again. My big thing is you gotta look at the sand wall. Let me show you the stick. Look, that sand wall right there, look at that. I'm right on the button. And like I said, if I span this around, this connector is, is it's gonna rest on this button. So you definitely can't do Lorenzo's or Hap joysticks. You guys can physically see if you don't know it, but you can see the sandwich stick here. You see the plate here. I mean, my other builds have ILs and it's a thicker plate and you can see it's right, it's right on the edge. Um, again, that's my only complaint. If they did move it over to the, if even so though, if they moved it over to the right and I get it, your, your buttons are closer to player two, but you could put the industry lens, but everything would have to shift. And not to mention this would have to shift. Again, joystick and buns, they're close. I mean, you, you have no room for error there. Look at that. Millimeters of space. Um, you know, again, I don't know if they're advertising it or suggesting to do sand ones, but you could see that right there is my main concern. It I would have had to notch this out if it didn't fit. There's no other way that joystick would fit. So just so you, know, you guys know. And then also you could see the speaker, big beefy speaker. That's, that's a big speaker. Um, but like I said, I don't know what the price is on the add-on. And there you go. All right, now we'll talk about the vinyl. Again, Gulf Coast decals, you can see it's, it's beautiful artwork. It's clean as always, uh, glossy finish. Again, I use Gulf Coast decals on all of my cabinets. This right here was basically, you had probably about a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch of bleed to cut. My only complaint with these machines, again, artwork makes it look great and makes the cabinet what you want. But especially on a Gen 1, there's no T-molding on this. So cutting the bleed off, it's, it's rough. You have to be very careful because again, there's no T-molding. T-molding not only is decorative, but it also hides the edges. You know, if in case you get a little choppy on the edges, it hides it. Um, applying the vinyl was a strategic task because if you look carefully, you don't see the screws. So I made sure the cabinet was assembled and then I applied, you don't see the screws. So that was my main number one thing. I was like, if I'm gonna do this, I wanna make sure I don't see screws. And as you can see, it looks great. Now this is something where like, a lot of people are gonna be like, Vic, why did this guy buy everything and he contacted you? I mean, I do what I do, but his big concern was the vinyl. If you don't know how to apply vinyl, you don't have the patience for it, you get bubbles and it could be brutal. The one thing I did notice about the artwork for this is Basically this here, the kick plate here and the, the, um, the riser. The kick plate here, no joke, the R work, it lines up perfectly as you can see. And that's something where like you had to, I had to take the R work, the piece that Justin gives, and I had no bleed here. I had to make sure that the, the vinyl was laid perfectly here. So I didn't cut anything here because as you can see, the WWF logo lines up. And again, if you don't know how to lay it, it's, it's a, it's, it literally will, will break the visual of the artwork. I think I did a great job because as you can see, like I said, it's just clean. You can see the W lines up. It's awesome. Kick plate and the whatever it is, the J panel, whatever. It's great. Um, again, little, very little bleed on this. You want to make sure that it was straight. You don't want any crooked and it looks great. So real quick, I'll show you the rear of the cabinet. I just want to show off this here, which is the hidden volume knob. Dead in the middle, right in the rear. I even asked the customer, I said, hey, you know, do you have any specific preference where you want to put this, this knob? Because I could put it on the J panel if needed. He's like, Vic, wherever you think is going to look good. So instead of like reaching under the control panel, it's right above. So, and it's a good amp. It's great. It does need five volt power. Um, and there you go. So that is the hidden volume switch on it. And again, clean everything. You've got your remote here for the LEDs. If you want to just keep it as one color, you want to strobe it, you want to flash it. So I always do that. And I'll show you real quick the bottom. I'll open this up. You can see the inside. So I want to point out real quick, everything clean as always. You got to prepare yourself and think it through. I mean, again, it's all about 16 feet of LEDs. So you can see here, I actually modified the back panel here with little notches so that nothing gets in the way of the LEDs from breaking. This is the center here, I just have to glue that down. But take a look at the bottom, like I said, this panel here actually drops down into a channel. I had to make sure that the nice kind of um, power strip cable wire is not affected and again, the LEDs are not affected. So if I just take the screws out of this, 
do one more screw and one more screw and pop out and up there you go that is the inside of the cabinet and again as you can see again as you can see here you see the little dimples this actually drops in so you just have to know you know measure out and cut out and uh it's awesome it's cool got everything there we got the pandora's box mounted nice and clean here the whole like LCD thing, that's just how it is. The wire's not long enough. I have it protected with cardboard here and then I zip tie it in place. I got everything kind of um, hot glued down as far as power supplies and you can see the LED wiring and all that. This breaks away in case he has to move the control panel and all that, but there you go. That is the inside of the RK 1UP Pandora's box mod. So I mean, honestly, there you have it. As far as the Pandora's box, you'll see my videos about the Pandora's box. I use the 18S Pro. Um, my, my supplier, my guy that I have, originally was a 4,500 game. Uh, now he does have an 8,000 game option. So I did message the customer. I said, hey, do you want the 8,000 or 45? And obviously people go, hey, more games, why not? It's the same price, why not? So this is running 8,000 games. Granted, yes, there are duplicates and there's probably about 13 different versions of Street Fighter, but it is what it is. It's pretty cool with this that you do have a favorites list. The customer only really wanted two games. He wanted WrestleFest and he wanted WF Superstars. Again, both of these games are arcade games. And as you can see, it is the first thing that launches. Once you plug the system in, it's the favorites list that show first and then the other games here. So I have it always set to coin mode. If it is set to coin mode, the kind of bar here will drop and show off all the other games. If you set it to free play, it's only gonna stay on this one screen until you move the joystick. So. There's a plus and minus to everything. I put a coin in, one button enter. Again, Pandora's boxes are just easy, user-friendly stuff. And as you can see, we are launched. And you could game on, you could, you could play. Let it load up and launch. And again, you could do two players, so you could bring them in and launch. Again, the customer main concern was to get WrestleFest and Superstars. Granted, yes, you could do that with a PC build, you could do that with a Raspberry Pi build, you could do that with Badass Sarah, but you are looking at more money. So this customer wanted the lowest costing option. And I said, listen, a Pandora's box. He wanted just these two games. Anything more than that is just a plus. So this obviously does have Street Fighter on it. It has Metal Slug, it's got Pac-Man, it's got Galaga. It's awesome, it's cool. You can't complain, it's, it's awesome. And again, Pandora's box is very easy, user-friendly stuff. So if you walk away, you don't touch the joysticks for three minutes, it will exit back to the main screen or you just hold down player one start, you have an option to enter the coin or B to exit. And you're back, it is instant. I'm telling you when I, when I sell these, I tell people if you need something simple, Airbnb setup, you want like a commercial area where it's, you know, anybody could walk up to it without breaking it, this is the best thing. You could modify the list, you could remove games and hide games I should say. As you can see this has quite a variety, it's got PSP and it does even have a search function too. So. If you want to make it like easy and you want to just look up some Street Fighter, you could actually type it in and then on the left it's going to show you all the games that contain the word in it. Even Game Boy, Super Nintendo, it's there. It's awesome. Again, Pandora's boxes are the most cost effective, meaning they are the cheapest option, but they do get the job done. So it's nothing wrong with it. Something easy, something quick, and boom, now we have Street Fighter. Awesome. It does play Final Fight 2, so if you want a Final Fight, it will play that. But again, Sanwa sticks, always a big advantage. Clean joysticks as always. So now real quick to show off uh, the Pandora's box, which is cool. Again, customer only wanted those two games. Uh, but if you go into the search bar and you just look up WWF, again, this is pre, you know, WWE. There is actually quite, I think it's 20 wrestling games. Uh, it's three pages. Granted, some of them are duplicates. So I'm gonna call it at 20. I mean, you even have from Super Nintendo, uh, there's even um, the Game Boy version and there is the N64 version. Again, granted it is a Pandora's box, but I'm gonna launch like WF Attitude. I, put, I posted this on Instagram because I was shocked. Again, N64 emulation on a Pandora's box. Granted, yes, it is not perfect. And granted, yes, like, you know, it's more than six buttons, but um, it was pretty cool uh, just to kind of see this. Not to mention I was looking at like the original, like the Super Nintendo, uh, there was, you know, there's a part where you just kind of whack someone with the chair. It's hysterical. I loved it. So again, this customer only wanted those two wrestling games, but in reality, he actually has more games and it's cool. Are you going to enjoy playing WWF Attitude 
on arcade sticks, maybe, I don't know, uh, but it works. That's the, that's the cool thing with it. I pushed the wrong button. And it's, it's cool. Let me lower my pinball. He's inserted now. So, like, look. Now, WF Attitude was one of those games where, like, you had to do a bunch of button combos, like, you know, like a Hadouken type of thing, just to get the... <laughs> That's N64 emulation. Hold it down, you could exit out. Again, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, to me, it's awesome. Royal, Royal... That's another thing, though, it is randomly named Royal Wrestling. Um, if I go to the Super Nintendo one, that's the one I played as a kid. Uh, it's labeled as WF Super Wrestling. Uh, we'll let that go. But it's pretty cool. As you can see, you could just, you know, go to the search, put in WWF. You might be able to put Wrestle. Uh, you know, there is other wrestling games, such as the arcade stuff. Uh, LJN, what a, what a company. I think this is the one. No, I, is it? I'm looking for the one that, like, you whack somebody with the chair. It's hilarious. <laughs> I don't think it's this one. It is not this one. Hold on, let me find it. So it might be this. This is labeled Royal Wrestling. It is WF Royal Rumble. Yeah, it's this one. Like, oh man, that, I can't play it because of copyright, but oh man, just just the music alone. Uh, like I said, I would play this as a kid and I just, I would purposely go, yeah, this is it. I would just purposely go outside the beginning of the match just to like whack somebody with a chair. <laughs> just to go, Poosh. It's just the, the funniest animation and the funniest, like, sound. <laughs> Let's see if I can get out. So I'm out of here. I gotta do it with the Undertaker. Oh, crap. <laughs> there it is. Let's see. <laughs> just here. Listen, listen. <laughs> Hilarious. You gotta love it. All right, guys, well, there you guys have it. This is the RK went out final fight modded into a WrestleFest with a Pandora's Box 18S Pro running 8,000 games. There you guys go. But now, as far as us hanging out, I got all the machines up. Let's talk about what's going on here. And let's reel over a 32-inch two-player and kind of compare the size of it. So I'll talk while I do it because obviously my cabinets are on casters. So it does make it easy to move over and just to put it right next to it, <laughs> I always laugh at this, not in a bad way, but it, this is perfect. This is awesome. I might even take it to the side because in all brutal honesty, again, I build my cabinets. This is my Konami replica cabinet that I make. I've made many of these. 32-inch um, screen on this. I'm going to take you to the side because I didn't even notice it, but right now, the depth, how deep this cabinet is, it matches up with the RK 1UP. A lot of people are like, hey Vic, I don't know if this is gonna fit in my house. Is it gonna fit through the door? Again, I do build these custom made to order. So if you have any specific kind of dimensions, I'll make it work and I have to make sure though on my end that it is reasonable and safe. Um, you know, that's my job. Uh, so I can't really say, oh, can you make a 12 inch wide cabinet and put a 30, no, like, let's be real. But I'll take it to the side just to kind of show off that just now it is actually the same depth as that. Again, basic deal as far as this cabinet here, you got a 32 inch 1080p TCL. This is running my modded switch. On the screen here is Retro Mania Wrestling. Two player panel, eight button layout for this. Again, this is a switch that is running inside of this. That's a Pandora's box. This is a switch. So, I mean, even me, like I like to stand next to the machine just so you can kind of visually see. I mean, I'm what, 511 and six. You know, you could just see visually, height wise and all that. You're comparing it to a 17 inch screen versus a 32 inch screen. Again, me personally, I'm big on height and like it's gonna be comfortable. Luckily this customer has the riser. The riser is a must for these cabinets. You, you just need it. I'm not arching my back. It's just brutal when you arch your back. It's probably the biggest complaint. That's why RK went up and made the risers. Um, but again, same thing with like screen wise when you're doing two player, Imagine playing four player on a 17 inch screen. Even on a 32, it's, it's doable, but I would rather give you my 55 inch for that. But again, as you can see, just visually, uh, it's a little bit wider and it's the same depth. As far as height wise though, you can see the height on it. 
Um, it is what it is. But my big thing is that me playing this, I'm at the appropriate height. If you know your Kunami arcade cabinets, I, I found the dimensions of Kunami cabinets and boom, there you go. The control panel and everything is accurate to the T. And I just like it like that. I don't have to, you know, granted this, my, my arms are lower, but this is like up here. It's a little bit of a height, not to mention I do have the tilted deck on my Kunami cabinets, like a real Kunami cab. This is flat deck. And it works. You can kind of see compared to the four player, the deck height is the same here. Maybe just a little bit higher, a couple of inches, but depends on what it is. I personally like the deck height here because of the screen location here. This right here, I'm kind of up against the you know TV here, not too close, but I'm against it. Either way though, just so you could see, you know, a full size machine versus the RK one up. So here as you can see, as far as depth. On this, yes, granted the Konami cabin, I could make it a little bit more narrower, but I mean, you're talking like three inches, it's nothing drastic, but at least you can kind of see the comparison depth wise of it. Again, Konami switch cabinet and the RK went up final fight. So now I'll even bring in closer the Neo Geo cabinet. Again, on caster just makes my life easy. I made the mistake of not putting the power cord behind the cabinet, so excuse the power cord mess here, but there's another example. That's my Neo Geo compared to the RK1. I love the Neo Geo cabinet. I can't get enough of it. Same kind of control deck height, but this has the dip to it. I picked the game, um, but yes, 32 inch. This is a 720p insignia on it. It is running a Raspberry Pi, so I don't need 1080p like the Switch. But again, visually here, yes, much higher here, but Neo Geo is built on purpose like that because I do have the scrolling marquee, which I didn't turn on, but there is a reason why it's this high. As far as depth though on this, it's actually narrower. This cabinet is narrower than my Konami cabinet. I'll take you to the side again. But again, some people are visual people. This right here, two players on this is comfortable. I'm not up against your elbows. I'm not, this is comfortable right here. Not to mention again, joysticks. These are the industry Lorenzo joysticks. And then you got the Sanwa. So there's a visual thing. People are visual. I'm visual. You can visually see it. I won't go there, but as you can see here, just now you're talking like a good inch uh, as far as depth wise compared to the Neo Geo on that. So pretty cool, right? I'll wheel this back. Again, the beauty of casters and all that. Uh, <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> you can slide this over and I will pull up the Bivik 55 inch cabinet. <laughs> yeah, there you go. If you want to compare that real quick. <laughs> 55 inch four player deck versus the RK1 of 17 inch two player deck. Um, yeah. It's also pretty cool. If you look carefully, I even have the pinball machine. I put all the wrestling games. So this is cool. If I launch like the WrestleFest, I mean, this is where arcade re like wrestling games started with this maybe even back like with the atari days and all that but it's kind of cool to see like original this is where it came from and then up to like current gen this is 2k22 it's like insane i, I always find it insane that one was running right uh, retro mania wrestling and then on my raspberry pi i do have the wrestling uh category wheel also you do have the pinball can't forget about pinball look at that oh i love it can't forget about the Royal Rumble pinball. I mean, even like the, like, love it. Like, it's a wrestle festival here. <laughs> well guys, there you guys have it. Wrestle Fest in the battle station. RK won a final fight modded to a WF Wrestle Fest cabinet. Yes. <laughs> Game on, my guys. Game on. Damn. Yeah.